So today we're going to be testing out gaming on the 13 inch MacBook Air with the base M4 chip. And I'm really excited about this test because the MacBook Air is the most important configuration of this generation. It's the cheapest Mac laptop that you can buy and it's often the one with the most sales. And of course, what differentiates the MacBook Air from say a MacBook Pro is the fact that, you know, you can't actually hear any noise coming out of it because it has no fans. And this is both an advantage and a disadvantage too. So it's great that you don't get any kind of annoying fan noise, but the MacBook Air is gonna be much more prone to something called thermal throttling. Basically, when you're doing something intense on your Mac, like playing a high performance game, then your Mac's gonna really heat up. Other devices have fans, which allow it to blow the hot air away. However, MacBook Airs don't have any fans. And so to stop your MacBook melting, it'll throttle the performance of your chips inside. Now, whether this affects your game really depends on how it handles what's called sustained loads. You can see in this example I'm playing Power World at too high a resolution at too high a graphic setting and the internal sensors show it's approaching 100 degrees so what the Mac will do is to throttle that performance lowering the temperature of the internals but if you watch the graph on the right you have a dramatic decrease in frame rate going from 22 to 18 fps in a matter of seconds. Now thermal throttling doesn't affect every single game the same way which is why I'm going to be recommending several games that are easily playable by this M4 MacBook Air. This is the base chip after all with only 10 CPU cores, 8 GPU cores. It has 16 gigabytes of unified memory and 256 gigabytes of storage space. So the first game on the list is Sniper Elite 4. So this is a recent released macOS port, which is basically perfect for the MacBook Air. Just make sure that you grab a decent mouse controller and you're on your way. So this is basically a World War II third and first person sniping game. And what's great is that this runs fantastically on the M4 MacBook Air. Here we're able to hit 1080p at ultra graphic settings and it's pretty much hitting 50 to 60 plus FPS, which basically means that we can max out this game on the M4 MacBook Air. So you can try this out for free on the App Store. If you do decide to buy it, you'll also receive the iPhone and iPad version in one single purchase, making it one of the more optimized and interesting titles for this platform. Next, we are looking at Resident Evil 4 Remake. So again, another recent macOS port that's also compatible on iPhone and iPad as well in a single purchase and also has a demo. So you can try out this first section of the game without paying any money and seeing whether the game is right for you. Here we're running the game at 1080p and we're using the Prioritize Performance preset. And here the 13 inch MacBook Air is able to achieve decent frame rates of about 45 to 55 or so FPS at these graphic settings. So Resident Evil 4 is one of the most beloved of this entire series and there are other Resident Evil games that you can also try out that also work really well on the MacBook Air. These include the recently released Resident Evil 2 Remake, Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 7 as well. Next, we are looking at Death Stranding for the Mac. So another really insanely well-optimized game for Apple Silicon hardware. If you want to find out how to change the aspect ratio to 16 by 10 to take advantage of the beautiful MacBook Air screen, then follow the link in the description. However, I'm doing testing at 16 by 9 aspect ratio at 1080p. So I've got the graphics settings set to 1080p default. Metal effects upscaling is set to quality mode and the game basically hovers between 60 and 70 plus FPS, which is absolutely fantastic. Again, another game which also runs on iPhone, iPad if you make a single purchase on the App Store. Next, we're looking at the ever popular Sims 4. So I'm sure this game doesn't need an introduction. You basically play as your Sim and you can build a house, get a job, make friends. And this is another example of a perfectly running game on the MacBook Air. It received a native R Mac port a couple of years ago and we can easily hit over 100 plus FPS PS at 1080p ultra. So of course, if you want to maximize battery life and heat, you probably want to cap this to 60 FPS, which you can do in the in-game settings and make sure to try this out yourself. It's basically free to play now. So just get it from the EA website, download EA desktop and try it out on your M4 Mac. Next up, we are looking at League of Legends. So this, of course, has had a Mac port for a really long time. It's still an Intel app that runs through Rosetta 2, but the performance is still really good. Now, the trick to make this run really well is to enable the Metal Graphics beta. And if you want to find out how to do this, I'll leave some links in the description and I'll be making a video tutorial on it. But basically at 1080p, we're able to run at over 200 FPS plus, which is absolutely plenty if you're planning to play League of Legends even a little bit competitively. And basically if you play this map or the Arrow map where you'll get even better performance, this will be a fine way to play League of Legends on your Mac. 
Next up, we're looking at the game Minecraft. So this has been able to run on the native version of Java for quite some time. And the real trick is to install Minecraft using something called a Prism Launcher, which makes it really easy to load up things like Sodium, Iris, and other mod dependencies, which allows the game to really take advantage of the efficient M series chip. So here, without any kind of shaders, we're running about 70 or 80 FPS. And here we're using complementary shaders unbound on the potato preset. And we're getting about 45 to 50 or so FPS. So next we are looking at Sonic Unleashed. So if you didn't already know, Sonic Unleashed Recompiled is a static recompilation of the Xbox 360 game, which has been ported to macOS. If you do want to find out how to do this, then make sure to click on the link in the description. Even though this is a project created by fans absolutely for free, it manages to rival many professionally made Mac ports. So here we're running at 1080p and it's easily hitting over 100 plus FPS. Pretty cool considering that this is actually based off of an Xbox 360 game. This is not being emulated and we're managing to use less than two gigabytes of RAM, making it a really good low-end title to try on your M4 MacBook Air. Next, we're going to take a quick look at console emulation. So this is RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator. They recently released a native ARM Mac version. Performance is theoretically better, however, compatibility might take a hit. Using emulators is a great way of expanding the Mac gaming library. I just love the idea that the Mac is basically a PlayStation 3 now and a whole load of the PS3 library is now compatible. If you want to find out how to install RPCS3, then follow the link in the description. So next up, we are playing Grand Theft Auto 5 Legacy. So this is the Windows version of the game running through the crossover 25 translation layer using D3 Metal 2.1. So there's an enhanced update that's recently been released as well. However, there are substantial issues with audio dialogue, so I recommend playing the older Legacy version. Unfortunately, you can't really play GTA online through crossover. Technically, it's possible through parallels. However, I wouldn't recommend recommend it for this low-end M4 MacBook Air. Anyway, the good news is that GTA 5 can run at about 60 to 80 FPS, depending on what you're doing exactly. We're running here at 1080p on the lower default settings. Lastly, we're going to be looking at a couple more Windows games and just a little bit of a warning about trying to play this on the M4 MacBook Air. So this particular laptop really is scraping the bottom of the minimum system requirements that you need to get higher end D3D Metal games working through translation. Here we're running Ghost of Tsushima, but we've turned down all of the settings. So this is very low on FSR Ultra Performance looks quite blurry, doesn't really do the game justice. Alternatively, you might want to play other Windows games that have lower system requirements. For example, this is Yakuza Like a Dragon running through Crossover 25. As you can see, performance is a lot better. We're running here at 1080p low and easily hitting about 40 or so FPS, which isn't too bad. This is a turn-based game after all. So anyway, that is my look at the MacBook Air M4 with the base configuration. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the games running in this video. Do you want me to make more videos about the MacBook Air or should I focus on the Mac Studio with the M3 Ultra chip? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, big thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.